You know, sometimes you read a comic book and you're like, what? Like, that's it? And this issue begins with the two sides of Justice and Doom raging into battle while the rest of the League is inside the hall trying to connect to the people telepathically, which begins to work at first until the energy starts to break apart, putting the Sigil of Doom back at full strength. Meanwhile, Hawkgirl and Shane are at the mercy of the Anti-Monitor when Green Lantern in the Speed Force car appears and hits the Anti-Monitor, separating the World Forger from him. The Anti-Monitor begs Perpetua for help, who then takes Earth-44 and pitches it at them. Knowing what he must do, the World Forger grabs his hammer and hits the oncoming planet, followed by a bright light. Meanwhile, back on Earth, the forces of Justice are losing the battle as Lex approaches the Hall when a beam of light hits the Hall of Justice, with the Justice League emerging, supercharged. However, despite their best efforts, because of the Legion of Doom powering Perpetua's chair, Lex is able to access and use each of the Justice League's weaknesses, such as ultraviolet energy against the Green Lantern and the Still Force against the Flash. Even Wonder Woman cutting Lex in half does nothing as he heals and blasts her back, prompting Jaro to attach himself to the Lex, allowing Batman to get in some strikes. However, this proves to be futile as Jaro has been injured by Lex's razor-sharp tongue as Lex grabs Batman by the throat only for Superman to come swooping in and deliver a powerful blow, which Lex calls disappointing. The two superpowered titans begin trading powerful blows, culminating in one attack from the Trinity, leading to Perpetua coming down to finish them off herself, as she claims. In these moments, Shane rushes to Lex and uses his telepathy to get inside Lex's head, find the child version of Martian Manhunter, and switch places with him, allowing the Martian Manhunter to return only for the telepath to use his ability to connect the minds of everyone on Earth in an attempt to get them to side with justice. And for a moment, it looks like the heroes are about to win until once again the people choose doom. Perpetua, now at full strength, tells the Justice League that she knew this would always be the outcome and she just wanted them to see it, at which point she hits them with a blast, switching to Martian Manhunter rematerializing in space and touching down on the moon as he sees Earth, now surrounded by a dome of energy, bearing the Sigil of Doom. Martian Manhunter is then approached by the rest of the League, who discuss their options and have trouble comprehending that people chose Doom. Martian Manhunter then says that he had a premonition that this would happen, but that maybe it was a trick, or he could change it, and that he should have seen it coming. Suddenly, a voice agrees as the Justice League are now in the presence of the Quintessence, a group of godlike beings who restore the hero suits and tell them that even if they had won, Perpetua would have returned and continued her mission. The Justice League are then shown a door by the Spectre that connects the actions of the past, present, and future, and if they choose to enter, they will give reckoning to every historical event, known and unknown. The issue ends with the Justice League charging through the door for one more fight for everything. And again, that's it? Man, that sucks. It's a bit of a downer ending. I mean, of course, there is that small glimpse of hope that they give that they can just fix everything, but then that hope is immediately shattered when you realize that the story is going to continue in an event book rather than continuing in the pages of Justice League and that the next issue of Justice League, a new creative team from writers and artists will be on that one. And I will say that I enjoyed the stories for the most part. I thought all the preceding books were actually very enjoyable, but in the grand scheme of things and a little bit of a retrospect, it did drag on just a tad. And after 10 parts of the Justice Team War, or heck, if you actually stayed on the entire run like I did, I kind of feel like the readers are owed a proper ending here rather than having to go buy an event book. Because as I closed the pages on this one, I didn't feel like I was rewarded for my time. And unfortunately with that, we closed the book on Scott Snyder's run on Justice League and we paved the way into the future with Robert Venditti. And it is with a heavy heart that I'm going to say that Justice League, issue number 37, issue number 38, issue number 39 gets the bronze okay medal. So Justice League issue number 39, have you read this book? I would love to hear your thoughts. Please leave your comments in the comment section below. And if you like this video, I'd love it if you'd smash that like button, share it with some friends, subscribe if you're not subscribed already, and ring that notification bell for more comic book content. And if you're wondering what to watch next, consider one of these two videos. 
Or if you'd like some more Justice League and want to know the entire story leading up to this particular book, you can check out the playlist right up here. Alright, take care, have a great day, and as always, stay geeky.